premium is a finer airbrush, it's 0.2 millimeter. So this is your 0.3 spray, and this is your 0.2 spray. Hello, this is BJ from Hearns, and I'm gonna be talking about the nine steps uh, airbrushes that we have, uh, which we've got set up here on the stand. So I'm gonna talk about a few of the different features and then show you what sort of spraying, um, I guess, um, patterns they have and how they differ from each other. So I've got here, this is the first one. It's pretty good hooked up to the compressor. So this is the classic. Uh, it's the uh, more um, economical of the two. This is a 0.3 millimeter nozzle and 0.3 is considered to be pretty much the standard size we would use for model building. I mean, it's also very good for some art work uh, and also for cake decorating and such. So main difference is you've got uh, uh, your metal um, uh, body here, which is uh, heavily chromed and then uh, it's double action, meaning as you pull it back, this controls how much paint flows through the nozzle and then as you push down, controls how much uh, uh, air is released. So if I press that down now, you hear the, uh, the air coming through. So that's a little bit, and then I'll push it all the way. That's full. Okay, so that's your double action. At the back, you've got a, uh, an end stop. So if I screw that all the way, this controls how much the, uh, the trigger moves. So that means you'll only be doing fine work. And then as you screw it open, you'll be able to move it through the full action like so. Okay, that's a classic there, 0.3 millimeter. Okay, over here we've got the uh, the premium. So the premium is a finer airbrush, it's 0.2 millimeter. It has a lot more um, uh, metal in the construction of the airbrush. Main difference you'll see is um, this has got a 0.2 millimeter nozzle, so it's much finer. Uh, it also has the MAC valve. So this is a uh, micro uh, adjustment um, uh, control. And what this does is it actually changes the um, uh, velocity of the air going through this point. So when you're adjusting the, uh, uh, the pressure at the compressor end, that's changing the, the pressure itself, the volume of air, but this is actually changing the speed. So this gives you a lot more um, control when you're trying to adjust for final lines and such. Okay, and that also has the uh, end stop that we had on the, uh, on the Classic. So you got your full movement, screw it down, and it'll control the, the movement of the... Uh, the trigger also it's double action so again you've got uh, paint flow control here so it's moving the needle back and forth through the nozzle and then you've got your air controls through here okay so I'm just going to do a little bit of preparation we'll start spraying through these two uh, airbrushes and we'll see what the differences are so just basically here I've got some uh, paint already pre-mixed uh, this is the Tamiya acrylic so there's an alcohol based acrylic with the, the relevant alcohol based thinner um, I'll just quickly show you here. So we'll just open up the paint jar. Now you make sure you, you, you thoroughly mix the paint first because you get pigment that settles on the bottom. Make sure that it feels quite consistent before you start putting it into your little cup to mix. Okay, so let's just move this over here. Just pop some paint. So one, two. Three, four, five. Okay, I'll just clean up the brush there. Make sure we seal this up so we don't tip it over. Okay, so I've got the thinner there. Uh, this is the uh, GSI thinner, so it also works with the Tamiya stuff. Now I've got the little handy uh, cap here, so this just allows you to open up a little valve rather than pouring out a whole heap from the cap you'll be able to control how much goes in. So I'm just gonna pour a little bit here. I'm gonna look for around about um, uh, one to one ratio. Something like that, a little bit more. Oop. A little bit of a spillage, that's right. Okay, we'll just get our brush and we'll mix it up. Now, getting the correct ratio is a bit of feel. So sometimes if you mix it down thinner, it's easier to go through the airbrush. Now one of the, the tricks would be, you generally, once it starts creating drips, you get a drip, 
once it creates drips, it's ready to airbrush. If it streams off the end, then it's too thick. So there we go. Alright, so that's what I'm ready to use. If you pour it in. So I use the end of the brush here. It just guides the paint into the, uh, the cup. Let's see it flowing. So that's enough of the demo at the moment. Right up. There are other caps that you can use. So uh, the caps are great if you put them on and if you're moving your airbrush a lot, it'll stop spillage from the side of the cup. But I'm not going to be moving it so much. So I'll just use it as is. Okay. So I've got this here, it's all connected. All right, so I'm going to start spraying on this piece of paper. All right, so I've got a little bit of a scrap bit of paper here. This is good for uh, doing your pre-spray, so it's not going to make sure it doesn't spatter. All right, so we're just going to do our first spray, just to make sure it's all spraying fine. As you can see, it's all coming out without problems. Okay, so that's the nozzles all clear, and we're ready to spray onto our surface. Okay, so the closer you get to the surface, the final lines are going to be. So I just gently bring it back. Okay, so that's at the finest point, very close to the surface. And I'll gently pull back on the needle and the distance, and you'll see how much more paint comes out. Okay, and that's at full. And as I get closer, you'll see it's a much heavier line. So, do. So you see that where it's spatted, that's just clearing out the nozzle. So I would normally do that here, just giving you a demonstration. So doing small dots. And closer you get. You get very fine dots. And then very fine lines if you need to. And that's the uh, the signature um, classic. So 0.3 millimeter nozzle, and as you can see, you can do very, very fine work, um, and then broader work, and that'll cover um, all your bases. So you can do uh, primer coats, base coats, and then fine detail. So particularly with um, camouflaging and such, and you're doing this fine camouflage on German aircraft, that's not a problem at all. Okay, so let's move on to the, um, uh, the premium, and I'll show you what the difference is. Okay, so perhaps I'll start with just uh, showing you how the MAC valve works. So the MAC valve you'll see has got an extension down the bottom here because it's been opened. Now if I turn it like this, this is actually closed now. Now if I try to spray, you get nothing. Okay, and as I open this, that's a very low pressure. And it's all about getting the, um, the sweet spot. So there's nothing wrong with this spray pan except it's got really thick um, atomization. So you might want that. It's got that speckling all around the edges. But if you increase the speed a little bit, this become much more controlled. Okay, if we just do this, just clear the spatter, clear the nozzle. So you see progressively how much smoother that is. And then increase the pressure again. Okay, and that's what the MAC valve does for you. Okay, so you, you get to a point where you're happy with the, uh, uh, the atomization and how smooth the finish is. Okay, and then you just use it the same as we would with the uh, Classic. So we get our, our fine, final line here. And then as we pull it back, So you see the heavy flow there, and then oh, we'll just clear it off, so it's just better, and then we can do fine dots. A bit further away you get bigger dots. So this would be perfect for, say, if you're doing World War uh, II German tank camouflage with the uh, the ambush type camouflage where they've got dots. And you see how close I'm actually at the surface. This is actually touching the surface. Look at these small ones. And that's where this cross cut um, nozzle cover helps. Because as you're getting close, uh, if that was fully sealed, then the air wouldn't have anywhere to escape and it'll actually be blowing this into a star pattern. Okay, so.
Okay. So hopefully that gives you a, a good idea of um, the differences between the two airbrushes. Now, I'll just um, reiterate a, a few um, points. Now, this is, um, just say this is the surface of your model. You want to make sure that you always clear the nozzle before you start spraying, because otherwise you can get spat up. So I'll just simulate that. So for instance, if you if you spray a large amount of paint, like this, you're going to have some paint that's already collected at this point. So if you go straight to your model again, like this, and uh, we just press it, you've got a spatter pattern there. So you may want that, but most of the time you don't. So you just make sure you, you've cleared it. So you're just pressing down, just getting air through there to clear the nozzle. Okay, so it's clear. And then you can start again, and you see how clean that line started off again was. Okay, so that's loaded. And again, if I just pressed it, you get a spatter. So you just make sure you clear it before you start again. So there you go. And you just make sure you do that each time, like this. And there you go. So you can see the differences. I'll get these two pieces of paper and just show you. It'll be a lot more obvious. Okay. So this is your point three spray, and this is your point two spray. So you're going to have a lot larger, um, uh, I guess, finish coming out of this one. Although you still have very, very smooth graduations. Uh, the lines you can still achieve, they're reasonably fine. But what you find over here is the point two has got a smooth graduation all the way through. And that's got a lot to do with the, uh, the micro um, uh, adjustment you can do with the air on the front with that Mac valve. But either way, they both perform very well. Uh, the point two obviously won't be able to work as well with uh, uh, thicker materials like primers, uh, metallic paints. So this is best used for fine work. And then the point three from classic, that would be able to do primers and metallics without a problem. So hopefully that uh, helps you choose which one's best for your uh, work. I mean, ultimately, if you can, having both of them would be perfect because they'll be able to achieve anything you like. Um, but if you just want the one, then I'll suggest you start with the classic. Um, or if you do a lot of fine work, like uh, miniatures, little figures, uh, then the point two would be the way to go. So that would be the premium. So that's your basic uh, use of uh, uh, the Nine Steps uh, airbrushes. I might just quickly show you how I, I clean them out. So these are still loaded up with um, some paint. So a little bit of paint left here. You just pour it back here to be reused. Like so. All right, let's just move it up here. So from here, I can just use a little bit of this water. This water is a little bit black because I've cleaned stuff before, but it doesn't really matter because it's just diluting the paint for the moment. Okay, use a brush. Brush the inside. Get all the way to the bottom. And just pour it out. We'll do that again for a second. I, get, I call this the, uh, the dirty rinse. Okay. Right, so that'll be quite diluted in there now. Okay, so you've got a little bit of paint left over there. Okay, see how dark it came out? That was uh, the paint that was already loaded. Okay, and then from here, I'll just give it a little bit of uh, thinner. So the thinners are, are pure. Give it a bit of a brush over. Make sure you get it all, all the way around. Okay, and I'll just spray that out. So if you've got a cleaning pot, that would be really handy. I'll just do it on here, just so you've got a quick idea of what's happening. So I'm just blowing out this thinner. And as the thinner is coming through, it's clearing out the nozzle. And also the cup is getting fully cleaned out as well.
Okay, so from this point here, that's ready to go with another color. Or if you've finished your, um, your session, just make sure the tip's clear. So the tip looks clean. And then you just get a, a cloth and you just wipe inside of the cup. Okay, and that's it. So you see how the cup is all very clean now. Now generally one of these sort of cleans is sufficient for it to be ready for the next time. If you're doing a really long session, you may have a lot of paint that's gone through, you'll probably want to disassemble this, take out the needle, um, and just check on the nozzle as well. That's it. That's ready to go. So hopefully that's been informative. Uh, if you've got any questions, please feel free to leave some comments on the bottom of the, uh, the video and um, I'll be able to answer those next time around. So that's our nine steps uh, airbrushes. Your point three, which is uh, the classic, and then point two, which is the premium.